Do you want Strava QOMs? And do you want them now? Well, Accepted Wisdom has it that if you want to climb better, you need to be disciplined and consistent with your training, disciplined and consistent with your recovery, and disciplined and consistent with your diet. But Accepted Wisdom is just so old fashioned. And frankly, discipline and consistency are they're just a bit boring and they require discipline and consistency. And frankly, after years of training and racing, I am over that. So let's look at some sneaky, but totally legal, I hasten to add, ways to improve your time on a climb to bag that QOM or KOM. Are you too fond of food to cut back on calories? Don't worry, you can lose weight from your bike much quicker. Leave the bead-ons at home. In fact, take the bottle cages off altogether. Wear your lightest clothing, take off your under jersey, take off your gloves, take off your socks. Don't need sunnies. I mean, you can even take off the saddle because you're gonna be standing up sprinting the whole way anyway, right? And weight is everything. This is a bit controversial, but it is actually possible to lose a kilo, maybe even two, just before you go riding. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. If you go for number two before you arrive, you can save a lot of weight. I mean, it would cost a lot of money to take two kilos off your bike, and it would take a huge amount of self-discipline to lose two kilos of body weight. So if going to the toilet is not part of your pre-ride routine, well, there's a couple of tricks you could try. You could have a really strong coffee, and you could do some star jumps. Oh, there we go. Along the same lines, what you eat in the 48 hours prior to your big Strava segment attempt can make quite a big difference to your body weight. You might have heard the pros talking about low residue diet. That basically means eating a diet that is low in fiber in the run up to a big event. That means that they're not carrying around a load of fiber in their gut. So skip the salad, skip the fruit and veg, stick to plain refined carbohydrate. Now you know that dietary advice is very much on the side of eating a lot of fruit and veg, so this is not healthy long term, this is really just a one to two day tactic in the run up to your target event. Lose weight the expensive way. Now this is probably what we would all love to be able to do, just spend, spend, spend to make the bike as light as possible. I mean, if you've got the money and you love your bike, why not? I'm assuming here that the UCI's minimum weight requirement of 6.8 kilos does not apply to you. If the climb you're targeting is not too steep, you should hopefully be going at quite a decent speed. Now, the rule of thumb for aero gains and losses is generally taken at about 20 kilometers an hour, but it's a sliding scale. So if you think you'll be riding at 10, 15 or 20 kilometers an hour, it makes sense to train at riding in a super aero position with your head down to minimize aero losses. And you can invest in a more aero frame, wheels, maybe some aero overshoes, a skin suit, aero helmet. Just make sure that you buy aero kit that's also super light because that's the really expensive way of doing it. I'd like to add here that the trade-off between aero losses and the mass of your bike and kit is a complicated optimization, and it will depend in each case on the steepness, the speed you're riding, the wind conditions, the air density, your frontal area, and the coefficient of drag, and your mass. In some cases, especially draggy, not very steep hills, being more aero but heavier will actually be faster than going as light as possible. Now, wind conditions can obviously make a big difference to your time on any segment, so do your homework. Research the prevailing wind direction, check out the seasonal and daily variations, monitor the weather conditions and set up an alert so you know when the best time is for your QOM attempt. Now, obviously, the main thing you want is a big, big tailwind, but also low air pressure and dry, cool conditions will help. Like the pros, it helps to have a good team around you if you want to win. And this is what cycling friends are for. First, you will need a cracking lead out into the foot of the climb. And then you'll need at least one, preferably several, super domestiques to sit on the front any point where the climb is below 
20% gradient. You'll want to make your team train rigorously for the event. I mean, you don't want to be let down by their lack of fitness. On the other hand, you don't want them to train too hard in case they drop you halfway up. Now, if none of your friends is up to the job of pacing you through a Strava segment, or if in fact you don't actually have any friends left, possibly due to your Strava-related behavior, well, don't panic. Instead, you can recruit your husband or boyfriend or parents or godparents or your own children even, set them up on an e-bike and get them to pace you into and then right through the climb. By the way, I take no responsibility for any divorces or familial discord resulting from this advice. Family and friends have a role to play off the bike as well. It's well known that the atmosphere and the ambience of a big event can help athletes to dig even deeper to try even harder for the win. So, persuade all your friends and your family to line up along the climb to cheer you on for your big QOM attempt. If your former friends have stopped answering your calls and your family thinks your Strava obsession is unhealthy and your partner's left you because you only ever talk about bikes, well, don't panic. What you can do is record the sound of cheering crowds and then play it over headphones while you're riding. Just make sure it's not illegal to ride with headphones wherever you are. Perfect. The hours leading up to a strenuous athletic event are crucial for getting your fueling right. If you've done everything right in preparation, you don't want to ruin it all by eating a pizza or even two just an hour beforehand. And even if you haven't done everything right, like you couldn't be bothered to train, still don't want to vomit halfway through. Your last meal before an intense effort, like a hard climb, should be at least three hours beforehand and should consist entirely of refined carbohydrates. Caffeine is also your friend. Caffeine will help you ride faster, unless, of course, you are sensitive to caffeine, in which case, don't drink too much of it. Recovery is critical to performance. In fact, you get stronger in recovery, not in training. So make sure you taper well for your KOM or QOM attempt. This could be a good excuse to not do the training that you didn't want to do anyway. It's definitely a good excuse not to do any heavy lifting, grocery shopping, cleaning, playing with the kids, or in fact, just having a social life. As the pros say, never run when you can walk, never walk when you can stand still, never stand still when you can lie down. Once you lie down, Take a nap. I hope this video helps you to achieve Strava segment glory. I have to say that I think it might actually be easier and more fun to just ride my bike more and eat less chocolate to go a bit faster, but there you go. If you would like to actually do some training, you can click down here for some GCN training videos.